just a little drawing back by the dog carving done in crayons. And when I was little, a box of crayons of same color and paper would keep me busy for hours, and I loved it. The last piece I did was finished just a couple of weeks before the show. It's this one here. which is a lot deeper in meaning and it reflects my feelings about some of the news and the things that are happening across the world. So from a little crayon box to a whole lot of different media in that one, uh, I can, and I can see the different stages in my life and it's kind of exciting. It kept me off the street. <laughs> what I'd like to do today is share a couple things with you. I don't want to talk too long because I'd rather do artwork and speak through that language than using words. But I want to tell you a couple of things that uh, I think are important. This show, when you look at it, you'll see a whole lot of different media, different materials used, different styles. And when I was wait, when I was going to choose a college major, I didn't think of anything but art. I knew it would be art, and I had to go to a college that was rather inexpensive. So I went to State Teachers College in Indiana, and sometimes I make decisions, and I don't think it's me thinking, because they're good ones. Somebody maybe out have some guardian angels or something. But that was a good thing I did because, first of all, when I graduated, I would have a job teaching, and I could have it as long as I needed it. That set me free from worrying about selling art and making it my career. So I could do anything I wanted all my life with art. And that was a good decision. One of the things that I learned in Indiana was about all the different ways you can look at art and do art, and all of the materials that are available to use. And I fell in love with media. Now here there's drawing media, different kinds. There's painting media. There's wood. And all of those things were important to me all my life. And I think I, during my lifetime, people would say, are you still doing art? Yeah. And I would ask myself, how come it still is exciting to me to do art when I'm older, and I've been at it for years? How come that's still exciting? And it's still exciting. And if I were going to live another 20 or 30 years, I'd still be doing some more. I have some notes and I have some ideas. Now, I'd like to tell you today three things, I think, that have kept me doing art all my life. The one is media. If you can get an idea and you can ask yourself, do I need color, or do I need 3D, or what? You have a lot of choices how you're going to do it. And I'm going to use this little section right back here with the wood carving of Morley's dog and explain that. The first little drawing that I ever did that's in this show is done with crayons, so that's one media. <clears throat> There's a sketch up at the top. We always had a dog. And dogs do what dogs do. So he would flop down and take a nap pretty often. And I always kept drawing materials around. And I thought, I would like to catch the essence of which lying on the sofa, the curvature of his back, the way he always put his nose over his feet and so on. So I'm going to use something that I can work very quickly. So the drawing of Butch there up at the top, the quick nap, is done in charcoal. Now, charcoal's not a good thing to work over because you're going to mess it up. So I have crayon and charcoal. 
My cousin had another dog, a basset dog with long ears that would plod around the ears and plop. And I wanted to do a caricature of that. Well, I didn't want to use charcoal because I wanted to think about this a while and I had to drop it someplace and then come back to it. So the little caricature is done in pen and ink. Ink will dry very fast so I could do a few things and then I could come back to it later. The other little frame there is just two little pencil drawings. And pencil drawings, everybody has a pencil with them most of the time. Now, you don't use pencils anymore. Probably you just use your pads and things. Over on that wall is, is where I took a simple, simple object, a pencil. And I used it, and I drew it over and over and over. And I was teaching at the high school at the time. And I had to monitor study halls, and you know how boring they are. <laughs> so I taped the piece of paper to my drawing board. I had to go to the other end of the building. And I took some pencils, and I thought, at least I can doodle. Well, I got down there, and I looked at a pencil, and I thought, you know, I don't even think, this doesn't even have a price. It's price. It's not a, it's not a real important object. But I started to draw it. Then I turned it, then I put one above the other one, and I began to fill that paper up. And when I go back to my classroom, I had paints and things, and I could add some color. And then I would go back the next day and add some more pencils. And then I needed another piece of paper. But what the good thing about this was, as my kids would come into class, they would take a look at it to see what else I had put in. I remember a real shy little girl came up and said, do you think you could put my pencil in your painting? Somebody heard her and brought hers. And this became a class project almost. Kids brought really interesting ones, and the ones at the bottom are ones that they brought in. Some, one even has the girl's name that I can remember her. It became a, an instance where art and people got connected very nicely. The other thing that I think kept me going is, I'm going to use a little phrase, and it, it applies to my life and my art. What if? What if? What would happen if I did this? Or what if that happened, or what if, what if? And I'm gonna give you a good example of a what if. But I think I was always wondering what if, even as a kid, because we sort of messed up the house a lot. And my brother and I dug holes in the yard and we hauled our chickens around in my baby buggy and all kind of what ifs. <laughs> and my mother would say, go to that chair and sit down till you know how to be good. So I think this thing of wondering what would happen is something that kept me going. Now, up until 1970 or thereabouts, I did a lot of drawings and paintings. But there was something I always wanted to try, and I was afraid to. And so the one day I said to myself, well, what if now is a good time to try it? I had seen wood carvings. Uh, on furniture. I had seen them in churches, in magazines, books. I thought it was too hard, but it was time to try it. So I went to my dad's workshop and got a little piece of wood, drew a little picture on it, picked up some sharp tools, and I remember my dad going to his grinding wheel that he used to sharpen tools, and he took a screwdriver and he fashioned that into a wood chisel. And I thought, well, what if it works? What if it doesn't? So I finished the little carving of a cowboy and his horse. I cut away all the parts that weren't part of the image. And when it was done, it wasn't too bad. So I took it to school to the woodshop teacher, and I showed it to him. And he was very amused because 
1970, only boys came to his shop. <laughs> Girls went to home ec. And here I was, a woman. So I said, I'll give you another piece of wood. See what you can do with that. This is it up here. So I thought, well, what if I... What if I don't tell anybody what I'm going to do, and then if it fails, I'll just throw everything out. So I started on one end, and I kept going as long as it was working, and I finally got to the other end, and in the process, I had learned some really neat things about wood carving, and by the time I got to the end, it was it had hooked me. I was already in love with, with that kind of an art thing. Almost everything in this room would be a what if, if you knew the story of it. Uh, some of the little pieces of, well, the little paintings of flowers, I thought, what if I just take the image of the flower right out over the mat? Why should that mat control me? I'm just going to, and so I tried some of that and I liked it. I tried combining woods almost like you would with a painting where you can squeeze different colors out on a palette. Some of the woods are different colored and so for some of these pieces like this, I could select several pieces of wood that I could have my own little palette. So I've tried all kinds of things. Some of them I started one way and so I started another way. When I did this piece, since it was a biblical character, I read the book of Jonah, jotted down some things that I might use, went over the list, made it smaller, and I ended up with five things that I would put into this uh, wood piece. And I selected four different woods. And I had a, a full-size drawing before I started. This Jonah here is entirely different. I had bought, because I liked the size of it and I liked the piece of wood, I had bought a big piece of walnut wood and I had it around a long time and I often did that. I would look at it and I'd think, should I do that? Finally, it said to me, I'm a fish. <laughs> and it was because Look at this wonderful thing. Look at the eye, look at the fin. So I start some, I've been asked how I start things. I start them all kind of ways. But by having a lot of different media, I can spend a little bit of time or a lot. There's some of these little drawings that were done rather quickly, but they have as much meaning to me as the big ones. And sometimes they touch another person. The what ifs and the media. There's one more thing. As I was working on art, when I started out, it was selfish, it was for me. And I did things I liked, and I was in a little area. I, I could do things in my house, like the dog, or the flowers in the garden, and all that stuff. As I began to be better at it, people in the community would say to me, can you help us, we have a project, we need an artist. And so I was discovering what to me was the value of the communication that art was possibly, possibly uh, able to do. And so someone said, art is the beginning of a silent conversation. And I thought, isn't that neat? Here's how it works. The artist creates something, and that something has to be somewhere. Whenever a person sees it, he carries on the conversation in his mind, or maybe he says something to a friend. And this conversation can go on for centuries. Some of the biggest museums, like the one in Washington, the Gallery of Art, has been there for years. Some of the ones in Europe have been there longer. An artist has an idea, starts a conversation. How many thousands of people join in that conversation? So the value of art 
beginning a conversation or a communication became very important to me. And I think that I changed my, maybe my description of art or my, what is it? To me, art is open for everybody. Everybody. I had a young man say to me, when I go to it at a museum, they tell me I don't like the right stuff. And I would bet that man never went back much. I'm grateful for this facility. I'm grateful for the bottle works. I'm grateful for the gallery and gazebo and Boma. I'm grateful that there are people who spend their lives raising money so that people like me have a place to display it and people like you can come for programs and things. We're very rich in this area. We have a lot of culture. We have, it's a great place to be. So the, when you look around, you'll see different media mentioned and know that there probably was a what if somewhere involved that caused me to start to do it in the first place. And know that how much I value people. I value all of you for coming. And many of you have become very good friends. I've, I've met people through art and they become lifelong friends and this is great. I, I value art so much because it opens the store to everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Because I'll be talking another time about some of these individual pieces. And I know people have asked me about wood, where do you get it? It's a good, it's a good thing. I used to use wood. Oh, I wanted to tell you something about the Morley's dog. I mentioned the other little drawings, but Morley's dog is done in a wonderful piece of cherry wood. When I tried cherry wood, I started, I liked it immediately, and I found that I'd rather use it to carve than anything. Morley's dog, if you remember, was kind of a Johnstown landmark or a little symbol of town. And I wanted to do this, and my dad had bought from a friend half of, half of a cherry tree and made sure that the wood would get to a lumber yard that could cut the slabs that I would use for carving. We dried it for several years outside. And then when I was going to do Morley's dog, I thought, I'm going to try a piece of that. What if I do it in that wood? And that turned out to be one of the most beautiful pieces of cherry that I had. And I borrowed this. This is, this is not for sale. It's, it belongs already to someone. But in that little section there, wood, charcoal, crayon, pencil, and ink. So I fell in love with media a long time ago, and there's so much of it here that I, I think that's, that, that really gave me the nudge to keep working along with the what ifs and the people. Anybody have a question? I hope that as you look at these things, something will touch your fancy or communicate something to you, too. Thank you very much. Thank you.